chronic exertional compartment syndrome. Sometimes our bodies can be our own worst enemies. Sometimes they hold us back. This video is about a relatively rare but very real issue called chronic exertional compartment syndrome. Chronic exertional compartment syndrome refers to an exercise-induced and reversible problem that can be painful and can limit athletes or military personnel. In my prior video, I talk about acute compartment syndrome, which is a surgical emergency. Please check out that video if you have not already. In this video, I will again review the pertinent anatomy of compartment syndrome. I will also review the symptoms, treatments, and expected outcomes from chronic exertional compartment syndrome. The anatomy. To review, our muscles and the tissues that travel through them, like nerves and blood vessels, are enclosed within tight, well-defined compartments. The borders of these compartments is a relatively inelastic tissue called fascia. This is the fascia that is talked about with physical therapy or myofascial releases, just for some context. Fascia provides attachment sites for muscles, maintains position of muscles during motion, and improves mechanical advantage of those muscles during muscle contraction. There's also evidence that fascia plays a part in muscle coordination and proprioception, your body's sense of position, based on how nerves are distributed into the fascia. Fascia borders are muscles creating compartments. There are four compartments in the lower leg, three in the upper leg, and three in the forearm. These are the locations that are most likely to have exertional compartment syndrome, with the lower leg being the most common. The pathophysiology, the process in which all this happens. This is an issue that usually affects people who are repetitively using their muscles with force. It includes running and jumping, but arm chronic exertional compartment syndrome has been noted in rowers or motocross riders. Muscle will enlarge with heavier activities due to increased blood flow. Get that pump going. But then we'll return to baseline within a few minutes. These muscles can expand up to 20% in volume. With exertional compartment syndrome, this excessive expansion of muscle pushes against the fascia, which does not expand. The pressure in the compartment then begins to drastically increase. If the pressure gets too high, then the microvascular system, starting with the veins, becomes compromised. Veins cannot flow out, more swelling occurs, arteries can't push oxygenated blood in, and pain from oxygen-starved tissues begins. So why does this happen to some people, but not most? There's likely a genetic component, as well as other factors that we do not fully understand. We do know that in those with confirmed lower leg exertional compartment syndrome, their baseline compartmental pressures are higher than normal. That is the extent of things at this point. Point is, there's still a lot to learn. The symptoms, what we feel, you will feel exercise-induced pain, cramping, and feelings of tightness of the involved compartment or compartments. There can also be weakness of the involved muscles and rarely numbness or tingling from irritated nerves. Exercise overall just is not tolerated very well. These symptoms can start with only a few minutes of exercise. Unlike acute compartment syndrome, which is an emergency, with rest, the symptoms resolve. The resolution of symptoms is usually also within minutes. Unfortunately, symptoms come back if activities resume. In very, very rare circumstances, exertional compartment syndrome can become acute compartment syndrome and is noted when rest does not make things better. Go to the emergency room if you are having pain that persists or worsens, even when you're resting. The diagnosis. Getting a diagnosis can be frustrating as often trained medical personnel are not present or available to examine patients around the time of exercise, which is really the only time diagnosis can be made. The examiner may notice that the compartment or compartments are firm, taut, and tender to pressure. There may also be some altered sensation. Just like acute compartment syndrome, sometimes special needles need to be placed into compartments to measure the pressures. Some people believe that a change of 10 millimeters mercury from rested to exercising is all the information needed. Some clinicians put a lot of weight on pressures after a brief period of rest. And well, this is easier to measure. As you can imagine, pressures can be hard to measure while people are exercising. More research is going on into non-invasive ways of making a diagnosis. And there is some promise to getting MRIs or other studies right after exercise. 
The treatment, non-operative management, could include physical therapy, but really, it is to stop the activities that are causing the symptoms. Unfortunately, this is often not an option for the person involved. That leaves us with surgery. Surgery is a fasciotomy, or opening the fascia up. There are different procedures, including big open incisions or other less invasive options, each with different pros and cons. Many athletes can return to sport by six weeks after surgery. Surgical success is based on many different factors, including location of the compartment syndrome and the activity level of the patient, but the patient can expect improved symptoms in the vast majority of cases. Other things to think about and why you should see a doctor, just because you have pain with exercise does not mean that this is what's going on. Other possibilities of exercise-induced pain include stress fractures or a strain or a sprain, peripheral nerve entrapments like carpal tunnel syndrome, pinched nerves from the spine, or even deep vein thrombosis. As always, be evaluated by a medical professional if you have any concerns. So there it is, chronic exertional compartment syndrome. Hopefully, you have a better understanding of the anatomy involved and why it happens and the treatment. I'm Dr. Lucius Pomerantz, an orthopedic surgeon. Please like, share, subscribe, turn on those notifications, and feel free to comment. I'm good at responding. I love to hear your stories and experiences with these issues, as do other contributors, and I'm always open to suggestions on my next video. Thank you.